Those of you who were born after the 90s will not remember a time when you couldn't be online if someone was also on the phone. This is pre-cell phone. And that was a real struggle for us 90s babies. During those moments of offline computer usage, I would curb my boredom with a wonderful software called Microsoft Office, specifically Microsoft Word. Think of it more as a Google Docs that is worse and offline and doesn't save anything to the cloud and is also expensive. That being said, there was this cool tool in there that whatever you typed, it would turn it into what you guys would actually recognize as meme font. It's called word art. Today I'm going to show you how to kind of create a similar look that is actually usable and clean in Photoshop. The effects that I'm doing in this tutorial are going to change based off of the resolution of your project. I'm just working at 1920 by 1080. So just a classic high definition project. Let's start with a text. Press T for text drop it in. I like to use Montserrat. You can choose whatever font you want. Eh, we could even do Montserrat Black. I think that's really nice. And let's get this font a little bit bigger. I'd say that that's a, that's a decent size. I like it centered as well. So let us type in what we want to type. The colors that I'm using, you don't have to use. And I think that that's what's fun about this is Whatever style you want to go for, you're going to be able to kind of mess with this in a way that makes it truly your own. I'm going to start with this kind of gold color. What we're going to do is on this text layer right here, I'm going to come down and I'm going to add a bevel emboss. I'm going to try and move it out of the way so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I have white on this bevel emboss. I'm going to set that to 75. The highlight mode is going to be normal. I have the shadow mode also going to be set to 75 and that is going to be on multiply. Now I did pick an orange for my shadow color because I'm using a gold color. You can change this however you want. This is the part that is going to be kind of totally up to you. The direction of the lighting, I like to go 45 degrees. I just think that that looks good. So the size I'm going to take down to probably about uh, eh, 13 pixels should be fine. And the depth, you know, this one again is really totally up to you. The stronger you make it, the more sharp your shadows and highlights are going to be. I like to take this down pretty decently. Make it a little bit more rounder. Just makes it easier to kind of see. And once you're done with that, I'm going to come down here and add a single drop shadow here. Now this drop shadow is... I have a few different drop shadows. If you only have one, you can press the plus next to it to add another drop shadow. But I have one saved in here that is just a regular tiny shadow. So we can go over the settings for this. At 1920 by 1080, I have my opacity set to 67. I also have my shadow set to multiply. So any color I put underneath, it's just gonna multiply with that color. Because I'm at such a, low resolution, I have my distance to just about three. You could probably go to five. I just didn't really care for how dark it got right behind this letter when I went to five. So I have it set to three. My spread is set to zero. You can take that spread up a little bit if you want, but it kind of sharpens everything up and you're starting to get a little bit of shadow on the light side of your letters. Um, you can fix that by taking the distance further. But again, this is totally up to you. Complete, the, these settings are, are gonna be your preference. And then I do have my size to seven. Again, with the size and the distance and the spread, these are going to kind of manipulate where the shadow's showing up. I don't want any shadow showing up where the highlights are showing up. So I am setting that to seven. Your contour, you can change this. If you start messing with some of these, it's gonna start getting a little funky. This one also works well. I think this one's the easiest little bit of fall off. And then you can add noise in if you want. I don't really care for the noise. It can add a little bit of texture if you're using blend modes in different ways, but let's just stick with this. Now that that is done, I'm gonna hit okay. And we have our word art. This is classic, just simple bevel and boss. But what I wanna do is I want to bring this down to a folder so that I can add bevel and emboss 
and other things on top of this because you can only add one bevel and emboss to a layer. If you put that layer into a group, you can then add another bevel and emboss above it. So that is what we're going to do. I'm gonna come here back down to my effects with my group selected. I'm gonna go down to bevel and emboss, and we're gonna add a new one in, and this one we're gonna change a little bit. The depth on this one is going to be a little bit higher, and the size is going to be uh, a little bit tighter, right? And I'm going to soften this one up a lot. This is also going to be totally up to you as a artist and a creative. If you wanna control the roundness that we have going on here, we can, you can do that with this, um, with the depth. But I do like how it kind of gradually pulls those shadows in. If I don't have it at all, this is what we've got. Um, but if I do add it in, it kind of rounds out those words a little bit more. And I think that that looks fine. I think that that looks pretty good. Now on this top bevel and emboss, I do want to take the opacity and of the shadow and highlight down to 50. 50 and 50. So we're not getting blown out highlights over here. And I am going to make sure that this depth is up a little bit. I do want it to be pretty dark back there in the shadow area. Now, before we leave here, I am going to come down, and this is we're going to, when we're going to start adding in some of the other effects that are in here. So I add the drop shadow in. I have Photoshop save a lot of my projects settings when I leave Photoshop so that they're just in there waiting for me when I want to reuse them. So yours probably will not be set up like this. But I have a, a blue color to kind of contrast with the orange. And then I have my distance set to 5. You can take this distance up. But this is one that is going to be kind of the placard that this text is going to sit on top of, right? And I have my size to 16. You could probably go to 20 and this would look fine. And also if you're at a higher resolution, you might need to go even further than that. Very dependent on uh, the resolution you're working at. But I have the spread completely out. And, and so this is what my, my, my first drop shadow is doing, right? It is creating kind of the flat placard that the yellow font is going to sit on top of. And we're going to get more of a 3D look with our second drop shadow. This drop shadow is the same blue color, just taking the brightness down. And I'm keeping global lighting on all of these effects so that it's, everything's all at the same exact angle. And what I did with this one, we can drag this back. I took the distance up to 15 and the size to 20. And that just gives a slight offset from the angle that we're using with the lighting and all the other shadows and everything else. And what we can do here too is I kind of want this uh, I kind of want this one to not have the dots in there, so we can take this size up a little bit. So we'll do 20, and then uh, now that we've raised that one up, we can come back in here. And so it's just, it's just setting layers, right? You're just setting different layers to do different things. If you take this too far away on distance, you're gonna see that it doesn't, it doesn't connect. And I haven't figured out how to make these, like, a straight line so it actually looks like it's 3D. I'm sure that there's an effect on here that can do that, but right now I'll keep that at 21 and I kind of keep the distance just close enough to where it looks like it's it's almost just a straight line from the corner and there's not too much rounding going on there, right? So I think 15 is where this was at. And lastly, we add in another drop shadow and this drop shadow is going to be just black set to multiply. It's much like this little one around here. This is using drop shadow more for what it was meant to be used, right? It's doing drop shadow. Now in this one, I add 8% noise and your spread and all of that is gonna be totally up to you. This is kind of more how far you want it from whatever it's sitting in front of, right? If you want it to be further away from the background, you can have it further away from the background with your distance. If you want it to be spreading out more, you can do that have it spread less, more translucent letters, whatever you want, this is totally up to you. But I like having this right about there. I think that that looks fine. And to really wrap this effect up, you can come down to the background, and one of the easiest ways to make sure that you always have control of the colors is I come to this, come down to hue saturation, and I just 
hit colorize, drop this down a little bit, drop, bring this up and set it to a orange. The cool thing about this is if you select your actual text layer, you have full control over every single font inside your font library. You have full control. I hope that this was a useful little tutorial. I know it was quick. Mess around with this. Like there's all sorts of different ways to do this and have it work out. I especially love the ability to have an effect saved so that if I do need word art in this style, I just have a project saved with this and I can come in, I can turn off my background and I can just export word art with shadows, make PNGs, drop it into whatever project file I'm working on. I wanted to say thanks again, you guys, for getting this channel to 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. It's fun creating and sharing my creative process. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.